Yo soy un soldado. Yo pasé media vida en la Fuerza Armada y los militares venezolanos, sobre todo los más jóvenes, me ven como su líder. But as news spread of what had happened, the poor dramatically marched to the palace in huge numbers. And soldiers even told their officers that they would not back the coup. Se cerraron y me protegieron. Y luego me rescataron en la isla los paracaidistas con los helicópteros. Yo soy líder paracaidista y allá fueron mis paracaidistas. Y me trajeron otra vez al palacio, rodeado de pueblo. Carmona had to flee the palace. El cardenal llegó a, al sitio donde me tenían, a la isla, a pedirme que firmara la renuncia. Y es porque desde Washington me estaban pidiendo la renuncia firmada. Le dije, vamos a rezar, le dije, vamos a rezar porque vienen a rescatarme. Se asustó. Estando él ahí, llegaban los paracaidistas. Y luego yo me lo traje a él en el mismo helicóptero. Le dije, venga. Sí, me dijo, vamos a rezar, presidente. Why did they do such a lousy job of it? It was a dinky uh, coup. I mean, why did they kill him when they had him? It wasn't heavyweight, you know, the way they did it, compared to Guatemala and Chile and Argentina. La Venezuela del año 2000, 2002, no es la Guatemala del 54, no es el Chile del 73. Esto es una revolución, yo lo he dicho, pacífica, pero armada. Sigamos avanzando con calma y con cordura. Sigue. The New York Times editorial board seemed embarrassed for supporting the coup and its government. The White House today admitted that U.S. officials held several meetings with Venezuelan opposition leaders in recent months to discuss the ouster of President Hugo Chavez, but insisted at every turn today that not once did they signal a military option was acceptable. We explicitly told opposition leaders that the United States would not support a coup. On Friday, it appears they did just that, embracing Chavez's successor at the same time U.S. allies in the region condemned what they clearly saw as a military coup. When Chavez was returned to power the very next day, the White House looked like it had sided with coup plotters over democracy. Some Democrats today call that deeply troubling. I think it's incumbent upon the greatest democracy in the world to defend democratically elected governments. I don't think that the United States had a very enlightened policy towards Venezuela specifically or Latin America generally throughout the Bush administration, but this particular incident was the worst possible decision the United States could have taken. It not only uh, locked in eternal enmity from the Chavez administration, but it made it very difficult for anybody else in Latin America to like the United States. He says that the coup that took place in his country was engineered by the United States and some in his administration say that in fact you had something to do with it. What, what do you say when you hear that? Well, I have to laugh because uh, the coup, first of all, there was no coup. Uh, if there had been a coup, I think Mr. Chavez would have been removed. There was a four-month four investigation by the State Department. There was absolutely no U.S. involvement in that uh, action uh, that, that Chavez calls a coup. Yes, the United States was hosting uh, people involved in the coup before it happened. There was involvement of U.S.-sponsored NGOs in training some of the people that were involved in the coup. And in the immediate aftermath of the coup, the United States government said that it was a resignation, not a coup, effectively recognizing the government that 
took office very briefly until President Chavez returned. The coup failed. But just eight months later, the management of the National Oil Company launched a strike with their workers and were joined by business owners who locked out their employees. The strike, once again supported by the private media, devastated the economy, causing a severe recession comparable to the worst years of the Great Depression in the U.S. A general strike by opponents of the president, Hugo Chavez, forced the Supreme Court to stop its work today. The oil industry in Venezuela has all been shut down. This attempt to topple Chavez failed as well. In support, the Cubans sent in 10,000 doctors and free medicines to establish clinics for the poor. In a swap Chavez made with Fidel Castro, he offered Cuba cheap oil in exchange for some of Cuba's doctors, like Niuris Moreno. Some of these people, she says, have never seen a doctor before. The stuff Chavez claims he's done, you know, reduce poverty, was reduced much, much more under the uh, prior leaders. One of my colleagues in the State Department says that Chavez loves the poor people so much he's created millions of new ones. After the government got control of the oil industry, the economy doubled in size over the next six years, with poverty reduced by half and extreme poverty by more than 70%. Aquí se da todo. Todo, todo. Sorgo. Chavez has a very poor human rights record. The Bush administration has compared him to Hitler. Human rights has become a, a new buzz phrase, much as freedom was during the Soviet era. But even here, political double standards exist. By comparison, our closest neighbor and ally in the region, Colombia, has a far worse human rights record than Venezuela. But because President Uribe is perceived as a friend to Washington in their war on drugs, they get a pass in the media that Chavez doesn't. Chavez has made a point of appearing in public with the tyrants Washington loves to hate. We have the ability to take him out, and I think the time has come that we exercise that ability. We don't need another $200 billion war uh, to get rid of one, you know, strong-arm dictator. It seems to me from the few days I've been with you that you have a very, you've grown a very thick skin to this. But at first, you must have been shocked. Me afectó. En lo personal. En lo personal, me dolía. Me dolía la mentira y el respeto a un pueblo pero luego me di cuenta que es parte de un juego y que por más que yo haga yo me puedo vestir de cura de, con, con un, un copito de esos rojos aquí <laughs> me van a seguir diciendo tirano los pueblos saben la verdad I, I understand um, Chavez's confrontational approach after the coup it started to feel a little bit more like war. George W. Bush, you are a donkey, Mr. Bush. Ayer estuvo el diablo aquí. En este mismo lugar, huele a sufre todavía. This is your desk. This is where you work. Este es uno de mis sitios de trabajo, preferido. Never seen such energy. Never. And then you told me you were going to come back here last night and work. Sí, anoche trabajé, mira. What time did you get to sleep last night? Was... Como a las 3 de la mañana. 3 a.m. Uh, did you work until 2 or 1? Trabajando, leyendo. Estoy obligado a estudiar mucho. Do you have any Yo tengo que saber del sal. Do you have any fun? Do you ever read for pleasure? Todo esto es un placer. Para you mean you go to sleep reading this book? I mean, how boring can you get? This is really boring.
Well, the first thing to know about Chavez is that he was literally born in a mud hut and grew up in poverty.